Today we're going to look at reciprocal functions. That's any function that belongs to the family whose parent function is like y equals 1 divided by x, as long as x isn't 0. You can also write the reciprocal function in this format for showing translations. But again, x can't be equal to h because that would cause division by 0. In the reciprocal function family, we have the parent function here, and you can stretch the parent function if you have an a value that is bigger than 1. And you can shrink the parent function if your a value is in between 0 and 1, or you might think as a fraction. Then if you reflect the graph across the x-axis, that's when the a value is negative. So notice I'm not putting absolute value bars around that. Then when we think about translations in this format here, when y equals k, that is a horizontal asymptote, and when x equals h, that gives us a vertical asymptote. And then putting all of that together, you can have a combined translation formula where you have some number a that will shrink, stretch, or reflect, and x minus h is going to move the graph to the right, and the plus k would move the entire parent graph up or down. Okay, so x minus h moves right, x plus h moves left, and then when k is positive, we're moving the graph up, and k is negative, you're going to move the graph down. So to graph the parent function here in example 1, we know that the vertical asymptote is at 0, x equals 0, and we have a horizontal asymptote at 0, where y equals 0, and the parent function has two branches, one in quadrant 1 and one in quadrant 3. And if you substitute 1 into our formula over here, then the point 1, 1 is on the curve, and the point negative 1, negative 1 is also on our curve. The domain of the function goes from negative infinity and skips over 0, and then again on the other side of 0 to infinity. The y values also have the same range. We had a vertical asymptote at 0 and a horizontal asymptote at 0. In example 2, we want to graph the graph y equals 4 divided by x and identify the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and the asymptotes of the graph. So in this case, we have no x-intercepts and we have no y-intercepts since we can't have division by 0, but x equals 0 is our vertical asymptote, and y equals 0 would be our horizontal asymptote. So we can real quickly sketch this graph. It's got a stretch of 4. And if you think about adding um, creating just a table real quickly. Let me sketch our asymptotes in here. So x equals 0 is our vertical. y equals 0 is the horizontal. And if we substitute x is 1, then y is 4. If we substitute x is 4, y is 1. So 1, 4 and 4, 1. If we substitute x is 2, then y is 2. So it's stretching our graph further away from the origin. 
where the parent had the point one one, and here this graph has the point two two. And then the other branch would be in quadrant three with that same feature. So we're going to pull it away from the origin. And that point would be negative 2, negative 2. We would substitute negative 1 and negative 4 would be our y. And then substitute negative 4 and negative 1 would be our y value. The domain for the graph for the function is the same as the parent, negative infinity to 0, and then 0 to infinity. And likewise on the range, from negative infinity to 0, and then 0 to infinity. For example, 3 and 4, we want to describe the effect of the A value on the graph. And in this case, we have an A value. You notice there's a negative. So A is negative 2. And that's going to cause our branches to reflect. And they'll reflect instead of being in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3, our branches will be in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. And again, the parent is being stretched away from the origin. So the parent stretches away from the origin. And we can real quickly sketch down here. So we've got a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. and a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And our branches are in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. And real quickly, the point 2, negative 1, 1, negative 2, <clears throat> negative 2, positive 1, and negative 1, positive 2. For example, 4, we want to graph 1 over 2x. So in this case, our a value is a half. So that's going to shrink our graph. And it's a positive half, so our branches will be still stay in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. But it, the a equals 1 half is going to shrink the parent. And it's going to be closer to the origin in this case. But the branches will be in quadrant 1 and 3, just like our parent graph. So sketching that. <coughs> Excuse me. X equals 0. And y equals 0, with branches staying closer to the asymptotes. And in this case, we have the point 1 and 1 half. And this should be a little smoother here. Negative 1, negative 1 half. In example 5, let's look at a translation. So we can see that the graph has x minus 2 in the denominator and that x minus h, that's going to move our vertical asymptote to the right 2. So instead of being at x equals 0, we're going to find that vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And then the k value is 3, so we want to move the horizontal asymptote up to y equals 3. Now you notice that the a value is positive 1, so that will keep our branches in the quadrant 1 area and the quadrant 3 area. In this case, we'll have a y-intercept and an x-intercept. 
So the domain of the function would go from negative infinity to 2, and then from 2 to infinity. Our range would be from negative infinity to 3, and 3 to infinity. And we've sketched the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes. If we substitute 0 into our formula up here, then we have 3 minus a half, so 2 and a half is our intercept. And if we set the equation equal to 0 and subtract the 3 and solve for x, we'll find out that 5 thirds is our x-intercept. So this point here would be 5 thirds, 0, and this y-intercept would be at 0, 2 and a half. And we said we had x equals 2 was the vertical asymptote, and y equals 3 was our horizontal asymptote. That was fairly easy. In example six, we want to be able to take a parent graph and construct an equation based on information. So if our parent is y equals 3 over x, and we know that we want to do x minus h in the denominator, and then plus k, so our formula our model looks like that, so our a value is 3, but this is our h value, and this is our k value. And putting all of that together, we could write our equation for this particular graph, and the a would stay 3, and x minus 0 would still leave x, and then the plus k would be plus 2. So 3 divided by x plus 2 is the equation. And then on part b, this is our h value. This is our k value. So we want our equation to keep the a value as 3. And x minus negative 2 makes a plus 2 on the bottom. And the k value is up 1, so we have 3 divided by the quantity x plus 2 plus 1. Example 7, the lacrosse team is renting a 52-passenger bus for a day trip, and the cost of the bus is $650. Four passengers will be chaperones, so that's pretty important right there. Four people are chaperones. If the students who attend share the cost equally, what function models the cost per student? And they're telling us to use the variable C with respect to the number of students, and we're going to use the variable N. So C represents the cost per student, and N represents, whoop, can't spell and talk at the same time. Cost per student. And N represents the number of students. Okay, so we've got to think about the domain here. So we know the first thing we're going to discuss is the fact that the bus holds 52 people or 52 passengers. So if there's 52 passengers but four of them are chaperones. Those wouldn't be students. Chaperone. Not doing so good on the spelling part here. That's going to be our domain. That's going to leave 48 students. So our domain is going to be integers from 1 to 48 since this is going to leave us with 48 students. So this is our domain. And then how many students have, must ride the bus to keep the cost per student 
to no more than $20. So we got to think about the students, no more than. There's $650 is the cost divided by the students, and no more than would be less than or equal to $20. So 650 divided by 20 means that our number of students has to be 32 and a half, but we don't want to have a half of a student. And that means we need to have at least 33 students have to ride the bus. in order to keep the cost at $20. Okay, that was a fairly easy lesson. See you next time.